you have heard the expression, that information just hit me. I guess that means that there's also a difference in the impact of how you're hit with information. Well, the information I have for you on today's show is not a slap. It is a punch that sends you flying right across the room. No kidding. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Now, today, you will need to put on your thinking caps. You have to fully appreciate, absorb, and understand the information I'm about to give you. And as you prepare yourself, yeah, for that punch on the face, <laughs> let me give you a slap. Information wise, that is. And I have a confession to make. The information has been staring at me for a very long time, but I couldn't process it. Now, you know, men, we men, are very slow in processing information. Unless, of course, you have been trained to process information. Yeah, women tend to be faster than men. Let me give you a quick example some of you can relate to. Your mother comes to visit you. And then one day when you come from work, yeah, your mother waits for your wife to go to the kitchen or something. And then she tells you, Oh, well done, my son. I can see your family is expanding very soon. I am praying that you give me a granddaughter. Yeah, I have too many grandsons. And then your expression is, what? What are you saying? What has just happened is that your mother, who is not as educated as you are, has just processed information that was right before your eyes. Yeah, and you didn't even notice, you didn't even process it. She noticed that the complexion yeah, on your wife's face has changed. And your wife did not have to vomit like in Nigerian movies <laughs> for her to know. And you find out that she's absolutely correct. She observed and she processed information. Now, the information that has been before me for weeks now are similarities to the 2017 elections in Kenya. Trolls Manenos. People online who are clearly promoting a certain agenda. Now, I don't want any angry emails from members of Club 1999, like the last time. Oh, Chris, you're talking about me. Oh, Chris, how can you call me a troll? Oh, Chris, how can you say I'm trying to promote an agenda? No, I'll not even answer that email. Yeah, so please don't send it. I'll not answer that message. Don't send it. Okay? I'm talking very generally. And of course, there are people with contrary opinions. There are people who think differently and they don't have an agenda. That's normal. However, if you've had the experience I had during the 2017 election, then it is very easy to tell what is a genuine contrary opinion and what is not. There are some telltale signs that are very easy to detect if you've seen it before. And one of the reasons why I brushed it aside before is because I couldn't put my mind, I couldn't wrap my brain around the possibility that somebody could actually be promoting the agenda of the cabal, the people behind the current global crisis. Yeah, that's impossible. How? Now, for those still in the dark, trolls are like the 36 bloggers. Yeah, people seated in one room. They could be more than 36 or less than 36. And each one of them has got dozens of handles. They shift from one to the other. Yeah, selling the same message. The whole idea, of course, is to influence yeah, everybody on social media. And a large chunk of our middle class are on social media very frequently. In fact, there are more people on social media than you think. Last year, I went to visit my rural home and I was shocked to find out 
that the 18 year old son of a neighbor was very active on social media yeah bang there in the rural area very remote village far away from civilization <laughs> but they're on social media and trust me yeah the people who do this and finance this are smart and smart people will not waste their money financing something that doesn't work then i remembered during the 2017 general elections the 36 bloggers came with something else censorship you said something they didn't like or you said something that was against their agenda and the next thing you knew is that you're picked up by the dci interrogated charged in court now we have to answer a very nagging question all these things were happening you know censorship trolls 36 bloggers all these things were happening in 2017 for a very good reason somebody had to win a general election although they were not popular they knew they would not get the majority of the votes these are methods used for political campaigns so why should somebody use this for something like this virus why the answer dawned on me or shall i say hit me it's really very simple in an election situation you want to influence people's thinking and opinion the objective being that they'll walk to a polling station and vote for you or alternatively they'll influence a voter somebody will go out and vote because social media has a wider audience than social media yeah people engage on social media then they go out and talk to their friends and their neighbors and their relatives etc etc in this instance the objective is clearly to influence people so that when the time comes the end game kicks in and so i need to ask you that question what is the end game here now this is interesting because there was a time very recently when if i'd said what i'm about to say you would have screamed back conspiracy theory chris but i'm afraid you can't do that anymore why because everybody's talking about the end game all over the world in kenya and well beyond everybody is talking about the end game because everybody has seen the end game and those perpetrators of this disaster are not hiding it in fact they're promoting it so aggressively yeah they've ignored trying to convince you anymore that this virus was not made in a lab yeah because too many people believe it was manufactured yeah they have quit trying to convince people otherwise and they're focused on trying to convince people of what they want to do as an end game the whole objective of this whole exercise which is to vaccinate everybody on the face of the earth and of course the main tool being used towards that is fear and then of course lockdown yeah, and we're being told you will never get out of lockdown until you have received the vaccination they're telling us that in plain language now i want you to agree with me that if something was absolutely true and somebody had nothing to hide there would be no need to use the techniques we're talking about censorship trolls to influence people online there'd be absolutely no need especially if it is a health crisis of this magnitude now of course in politics it's used because to win a political campaign in case you still don't know you have to speak a lot of lies and untruth you have to tell people what they want to hear and convince them that you're telling the truth and therefore to win a political campaign anywhere in the world you need to control the information carefully yeah and in the western world they use propaganda and trolls etc etc in kenya they have used censorship and trolls 
Now globally, it appears they are using censorship and trolls. We can see that very clearly. So my advice, don't get emotional yeah, when you come across somebody who doesn't seem to be able to see what you're seeing very clearly. It is not that they are slow. It's just that work a job. <laughs> oh yes, they're working and they're being paid for what they're doing. Now, if you still don't believe me, yeah, look at how we have been receiving responses yeah, to various issues that people have raised. For example, the issue of all oh, Africans are not being affected by this thing, most of Africa is not affected, has been responded to. Don't be naive. When things happen as suddenly as this thing has happened, you have to ask yourself questions. So now all of a sudden, yeah, we find out that blacks in the United States are worst hit by the virus. We didn't see that trend on social media before, but suddenly the virus has responded <laughs> to what people are saying. And since they don't want people to go in that direction, the virus has responded. And suddenly the epicenter is black communities. Very suddenly, the focus has moved away from Italy to Ecuador. And suddenly, Melinda Gates, the wife to Bill Gates, gives an interview on CNN where her main focus is what keeps her awake at night. And what keeps her awake at night? Africa, third world countries, developing countries. And she predicts it will hit Africa very hard. Now, you know, these are global experts. Yeah, if you're in Kenya and you're in the health department, who are you? You must toe the line. You must listen to what experts are telling you yeah, and pass on the message to the people of Kenya. And so, recently, our health CS, Mutai Kagwe, tells Kenyans, prepare for the worst. Now, step back for a minute and think a little more deeply about all this. So far, Africa has not been affected much by the virus. Usually, if we take what has happened in the past, when Africa is affected, it is impossible to hide. Everybody knows. It sweeps right across the continent. Yeah, and there's plenty of photographic evidence and other evidence to see what is happening. But so far, nothing. In fact, countries are desperate yeah, to increase their figures. You have any ailment connected to the lungs and definitely your death certificate will have the virus as a cause of death. And so I asked myself, how are they going to pull off this magic? Yeah, because clearly this thing has not affected Africa. That is the truth. It is there for everybody to see. So I ask myself, how are they going to change that? Yeah, so that Africa becomes the new epicenter for the virus. Now, one super fascinating thing that David Icke has told us is that he looked at the figures yeah, of total number of deaths in Italy yeah, the previous year and this year during the crisis of the COVID-19. And he found something shocking. The figures were the same. People were passing on before. Yeah, that's a process in life. It's part of life. And the problem with Africa is that our death rate is very high yeah, because of various issues. The rate of people passing on minus the virus is very high. And by the way, now I'm coming to the very explosive information I promised at the beginning of this video. Now, before I give you the information, let us agree on something. There are a number of diseases here yeah, that can cause you problems in your lung. Is that correct? Of course it is. And I know this next one, most of you don't know. Yeah. There are also physical injuries that can cause you problems in the lung, difficulties in breathing. And I'll come back to that shortly. And please remember, as we proceed, 
The main objective here is to keep people afraid to spread fear and to keep people under lockdown. Those are the main objectives. Which means, yes, this virus is there. Yes, it is killing people. Yes, it is deadly. And that is why you must strictly adhere to the conditions and rules and advice we've been given by the government. Yeah? You can't take chances with your life. Yeah? Especially when you're dealing with the cabal. Very dangerous people who have no feelings. They don't care. Yeah, so you can't take chances. So stick to what you've been advised to do. All we're doing here is analyzing the facts. Trying to shed some light into some darkness. And by the way, in keeping up yeah, with that agenda to spread as much fear as possible, I saw photographs on social media today, widely circulated. You know what photographs I'm talking about? Zile mifuko za kufungia maiti ama kubeba maiti. Oh yes, those black bags yeah, used for bodies. Yeah, in fact, somebody called me in a panic. Chris, wameleta hizi vitu bwana. Haya haya haya. Tutafanya nini? Hao watu wanataka nini? <laughs> True story. I had that conversation a short while ago. And so it is working. Oh yes, it's working very well. And so the next thing that has to happen is that those things have to be filled. Yeah, with actual human beings who have passed on. So how will they do it? Because what they need are many bodies, yeah, and this virus is not producing that. It's not killing as many as they would like. Anyway, back to what we're saying. So we have agreed any disease that has any link to the lungs, and especially, yeah, if it causes you difficulty in breathing, that will definitely cause you to be diagnosed the virus. We've agreed on that. Now, a few minutes ago, I was trying to understand from an expert why if somebody has a disease like pneumonia, for example, and you take the test for the virus, chances are very high it will come back positive. Yeah, very high. And yet you don't have the virus. You have pneumonia. Pneumonia from bacteria can be treated with antibiotics. Now that we have agreed, let me give you evidence. That what we're saying is true. Somebody told us the other day that she took her mother to hospital and initially the doctors told her that her mother has pneumonia and then later they changed that diagnosis to the virus. Okay? Let me just leave it at that. Okay? Now let's move on to some statistics. Yeah? Genuine official statistics. And you need to sit down for this one. Every year in Kenya, do you know how many children are treated for pneumonia and they recover? 700,000. Now, if you add adults, that will be comfortably over a million every year. And so, hypothetically, if all this one million people took a test, yeah, chances are high, yeah, that the whole million or even at least 800,000 would be diagnosed as having the virus. And that figure would be added to whatever other figure that is already there. Now, let's move to those black bags. Do you know the number one killer in Kenya today? It is not malaria. Malaria is number two. It's not cancer. Cancer is number three. And it's not HIV. That's number four. The number one is, wait for this one, pneumonia. I was only able to get the exact figures yeah, of people passed on for 2017. Yeah, and it was 21,584. Now, based on what has happened in the past... Yeah, you can be sure that all those will test positive for the virus. 
assuming it is the same number this year. And of course, that will be very effective in spreading fear. Yeah, 21,000 people have passed on from this thing. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. What are we going to do? And we have agreed that pneumonia is not the only disease that causes difficulty in breathing. There are others. So that number will be higher. Yeah, and it will fulfill the objective of the cabal to spread terror. Yeah, please lock us up. Please, lockdown is the only way to deal with this thing. Please, please. Yep, fear is very effective. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to get those figures for those other diseases that cause difficulty in breathing. Yeah, but let's move on to something else. Physical injury. And let us take a hypothetical situation. Yeah, something which is common in Kenya. Road accidents. Now, one of the things that causes difficulties in breathing is internal bleeding. Internal bleeding can come about due to various reasons. Yeah, for instance, physical injury. Now, in most cases of road accidents, for instance, if you're driving and you get involved in a collision, the part of your body that will be affected will be your chest. Your chest and abdomen area. Now, one of the big dangers about internal bleeding, it, it is sometimes difficult to detect, even if you go to hospital. Yeah. And especially if it is slow. Yeah, the rate of that internal bleeding is not that fast. It's slow. That can be deadly. And indeed, internal bleeding can go on for a long time. Yeah, hours. Days, weeks, even months. Now, before you kick me out of here, let me explain how it can go on for months. You can take a certain drug, medicine, yeah, that can affect the lining of your stomach. Now, because of that effect, yeah, the lining of your stomach starts to bleed slowly. Yeah. Now, that one will take months before you even feel anything. Anything serious enough to go and see a doctor. Anyway, back to what we're saying. So you get involved in this accident and uh, you have internal bleeding, you're not aware. And this internal bleeding is in your lung area. So you walk away from the accident, you go and do your other things, then things start going south. Yeah. What normally happens is that this condition is called hemothorax, where you have internal bleeding in your lungs. And one of the symptoms of that is difficulty in breathing. So you walk into this hospital in Kenya. Yeah, of course you'll not tell them about the road accident. You'll tell them, I'm having difficulties breathing. So what do you think they're going to diagnose you with? What do you think is the first test they'll do on you? And if you pass on, what do you think the death certificate will say? I don't think I need to say any more. Bottom line, the objective yeah, of these very evil people will be achieved. Any African leader or president who tries to bring his people out of a lockdown will be seen as being crazy, even by his own people. Are you mad? You can see what this thing is doing. And now you're saying end of lockdown? End of curfew? I know. No, 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 no. But as I said in my video yesterday, there is a bigger game being played here. Yeah, because the whole objective are the effects and consequences of a lockdown and cessation of economic activities. In simple language, those behind this are not really interested in that lockdown. They're interested in the effects and consequences of that lockdown. Damaged economies and of course much higher casualties than from the virus. Only God Almighty can save us. Until next time, this is Chris Komekuch.